Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the interview dialogues of the Trumpet of Truth. I'm your host, Zhong Xing. Today, we are honored to be able to invite Professor Massimo Intervenia again, who is a renowned expert on new religious movements, to discuss and analyze the Chinese Communist Party's repression and persecution of Christians. Professor Intervenia, good afternoon. Good afternoon. We have seen you appeal for the Church of Almighty God, who is brutally persecuted by the Chinese Communist Party, especially during the 37th session of the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva. You and several Western scholars refuted the fallacies of the CCP's delegates. We highly admire your dollar spirit and your efforts in upholding justice. Professor Intervenian, would you mind sharing with us how you come to know the facts regarding the CCP's brutal persecution of the Church of Almighty God? Well, first of all, I'd like to say it's very significant that we have this interview in this particular day that for uh, many people around the world, uh, that's Friday before Easter, and it was the day of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Of course, as scholars, we should say we don't know the real date. With, uh, we are not 100% sure, but it's highly significant that for millions of people throughout the world, mm -hmm. this particular day is the day uh, Jesus Christ was persecuted to death himself. And uh, so I'm very much reminded of the words of Jesus Christ, says, as I've been persecuted, you will be persecuted too. So what is happening in China to, to many Christians, and in particular to the Christians of the Church of Almighty God, uh, is very much predicted in the Gospel, where Jesus Christ uh, said it will not be very easy uh, to be a Christian, uh, because there are powers in this world that will persecute you. So how do I know? That question was raised in the, the side event at the United Nations and a nice young lady from China uh, suggested that we go to China and uh, interview the police officers and uh, the anti-cultists uh, and even people who claim to have been members of the Church of Almighty God uh, and to have been successfully uh, reformed in the labor camps. But the lady didn't know that that's what precisely what we did. Uh, in 2017, five Western scholars who had some knowledge about the Church of Almighty God were invited by the uh, CACA, the Chinese Anti-Cult Association, which is a branch of the CCP, to two conferences in Zhengzhou and in Hong Kong, two different conferences, which were also attended by the high-level leader of Office 6110, which is the office uh, dealing with the CAGA or the heterodox teachings in China. Particularly in Henan, we spent one week uh, visiting different cities and we visited the police in different cities, uh, uh, the Anti-Cult Association, the Three Self Church, and uh, mm, we uh, met some people, of course we cannot know for sure whether this is true or not, but who claimed to have been in the past members of the Church of Almighty God when they were arrested, uh, sent to labor camp, and they were successfully reformed. So we did our homework and uh, we, we uh, also collected all the documents the CCP was ready to share with us. If there are other documents and they didn't want to share, that's their business, it's not ours. So we have a lot of documents and these documents we received from CCP. We interviewed the people, the CCP believed it was useful for us to, to, to interview. But of course, being scholars, uh, we didn't listen only to one side. We also interviewed uh, uh, brothers and sisters of the Church of Almighty God in different countries, personally, uh, 
I interviewed members of the Church of Almighty God uh, in many countries, in uh, US, in uh, uh, South Korea, uh, Italy, uh, France, Finland. So I interviewed uh, dozens, uh, perhaps uh, I met more than 100 members of the Church of Almighty God. So I, I know the version of the CCP and I also know the, the version of uh, those who escaped China. Uh, interestingly, the CCP itself never denied that if somebody in um, China is identified as a member of the Church of Almighty God, he or she is arrested and sent to labor camp. In fact, they are very proud that they succeeded in arresting thousands of members of the Church of Almighty God. Of course, they don't admit they torture people, but they explain the people in labor camps are subject to re-education uh, and uh, are persuaded to, to leave the, the Church of Almighty God. We, uh, however, believe uh, that it's, it's even worse. Uh, and uh, what is very interesting is the work which was done by a dozen uh, of NGOs in connection with Universal Periodic Review. Uh, what is the Universal Periodic Review? Every five years, the United Nations uh, uh, make for all the countries, uh, all the member states in the United Nations, come before the Human Rights Council in Geneva every five years for an assessment of their human rights situation. And uh, before, this assessment, member states and uh, NGOs can uh, file uh, submissions uh, about problems in the particular country. Now, China comes in uh, October uh, 2018 for uh, its five-year revision of human rights, the Universal Periodic Review. And uh, in anticipation of this event, uh, 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 more than a, a dozen, I believe, uh, uh, or so uh, NGOs have filed uh, submissions uh, uh, about the situation of the Christians of the Church of Almighty God uh, in um, China. Uh, now, these submissions are uh, by very respected NGOs, uh, one of them accredited at the ECOSOC, the Economic and Social Council of the United States is called the Coordination of Association and Individuals for Freedom of Conscience. And uh, more, these declarations, uh, these submissions uh, are accompanied by sworn affidavits, so declarations sworn before a notary public either by people uh, who, who have been personally persecuted or who have direct knowledge that relatives and friends uh, have been persecuted, in some cases even persecuted to death. So I believe the Universal Periodic Review uh, came at the right moment because it uh, uh, created a body of official document uh, we can now rely on, and uh, these official documents uh, uh, prove that not only uh, the Christians of the Church of Almighty God, if uh, identified as such, are arrested and sent to labor camp or jail in China. That's admitted by the Chinese authorities. It's, it's not called into question, but I believe the body of documents uh, created for the Universal Periodic Review for the first time. Uh, there are all, not only statements by the Church of Almighty God or some NGO, but we have documents proving that uh, torture and persecution to death also occur in respect of the Christians of the Church of Almighty God in China. That's very serious because, of course, uh, uh, arresting and detaining uh, people uh, for uh, question of religion and belief is already a very serious uh, uh, breach of the uh, Universal uh, Human Rights Convention. Uh, China signed this convention.
but uh, also mm, uh, there are international conventions against torture uh, which China has also signed and uh, torture is normally regarded as uh, the, the ultimate evil. It's much worse than simply arresting and detaining people. And of course, killing people is even worse than torture. So uh, in a way, it's, it's, uh, um, it's really fortunate that China had to come for the universal periodic review because now we can say we have a body of uh, reliable documents proving that the Christians of the Church of Almighty God are not only uh, put in jail but also tortured uh, and in some instances uh, killed. So that I believe it's very serious and uh, is very important and I'm sure the United Nations uh, will not fail to pay attention to it. Professor Intervenian, since the CCP took power, it has been persecuting religious beliefs. The fact is universally recognized. However, the CCP has always found all kinds of excuses to cover up the truth that it persecutes religious beliefs. For example, the CCP claims that people who believe in Almighty God abandon their families for preaching that they don't want their families anymore, and claims the people who believe in Almighty God remain celibate. It also claims that their religious gatherings disturb public order. It has arrested and sentenced many Christians on charges of disturbing public order. Professor Intervenia, what do you think about the CCP's condemnation of the Church of Almighty God? Are those statements tenable? Well, the policy against religion of the CCP is not getting better. It's actually getting worse. Uh, in, uh, there is a new law on um, uh, religion came into force on February 1,018, which is much more restrictive uh, for house churches than it was the, the, the previous law. Uh, I, I believe that uh, in one way, uh, house churches and Church of Almighty God uh, are equally persecuted, but in another way, particularly when we deal with refugee assessments in the West or in Korea, I believe it's also important to say that one thing is theology or politics and one thing is the law. In the law, the situation of Church of Almighty God is much worse than the house churches because uh, uh, Chinese law uh, makes a distinction uh, between uh, uh, illegal churches and CAGIAO. Uh, illegal churches uh, uh, theoretically cannot exist, so their buildings can be destroyed at any time, but we know that in practice uh, uh, the Chinese policy towards unregistered churches, including most house churches, is a stop and go. Uh, depending on Chinese politics, sometimes there is a modicum of tolerance and sometimes uh, uh, there is a crackdown. But uh, in the, it, it is important, I believe, for refugee cases. Again, that's not a theological question, it's a legal question to explain that in the law there is a difference between unregistered churches, including most house churches, and those churches uh, which are in the list of the CAGIAO. Because being uh, as a person, uh, a member of a house church is not a crime. I mean, your church can be destroyed, your property can be confiscated, but normally you don't go to jail for the sole fact of being a member of an unregistered church. While if you are a member of a CAGIAO, including the Church of Almighty God, you go to jail. So there is a difference. And this difference is consecrated uh, as we know in Article 300 of the, the Chinese Criminal Code, uh, because Article 300 uh, states that using a, a CAGIAO is punished with imprisonment from three to seven years or more. Now, what uh, does it mean using a CAGIAO? 
uh, there is an official interpretation of 2017 by the Chinese Supreme Court and the Supreme Procuratorate, they translate, which is a non-existing word in English, which gives certain criteria, but in practice, uh, if we look at the decisions of the Chinese courts, including decisions publicized in the Chinese governmental media, we see that uh, it, it using a CHO really means uh, being active in a CHO. So uh, it, it is enough to, to, to have uh, a few books or to print books, to duplicate uh, 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 DVDs, uh, uh, everything connected with being active uh, in a group called CHO is a crime. And, uh, uh, the concept of Xie Zhao is very old. In fact, it started in the Ming Dynasty. And uh, the lists of Xie Zhao in China always were uh, uh, made by the political power, be it the emperor or the republic or now the CCP. And uh, their list of groups the government does not like. So how do you know that Church of Almighty God is a Xie Zhao? The easy answer is because it's in the list of the CHO and the uh, uh, Church of Almighty God went onto the list of CHO in 95. Now it was only created in 91 and never disappeared. It has always remained in all lists of CHO. So I, be, I understand that uh, theologically perhaps uh, uh, house churches and Church of Almighty God very similar, but the point of view of uh, uh, Chinese law it's different. If you are in the list of a CHO, you are much more severely persecuted. And this point is important uh, when you deal with uh, refugee commissions or courts of law, uh, which should decide whether or not to give you uh, the status of, uh, of uh, refugee. Now, coming back to the other part of your question, uh, the uh, CCP, uh, as I said, when we visited China, they didn't really uh, deny that they are persecuting the Church of Almighty God. Uh, as I said, of course, they will not admit the torture or the killings, but we say, yes, the, the people we identify as members of the Church of Almighty God, we arrest and sent for re-education. So that's admitted. But as you say, they have uh, some excuse they, they use for uh, this persecution. And they will say that the Church of Almighty God uh, committed some crimes. Uh, normally, they used to quote three, and now they quote four. Uh, the, the main crime they quote uh, are the, the McDonald's incident in, in 2014. Uh, disorder created in connection with the idea that the world will end uh, in 2012 uh, and uh, gouging out the eyes of a boy in um, Shanxi in uh, uh, 2013, I believe. Uh, and uh, these were the three main incidents. Then there was an old uh, fourth incident, uh, uh, kidnapping uh, members of the China Gospel Fellowship in 2002. That was never used by CCP. It was used only in the propaganda against the Church of Almighty God by some um, Christian pastors. But uh, uh, perhaps in connection with our visit there, they also added this fourth incident, which really came from some Christian leader. The, the, the CCP authorities never investigated nor prosecuted anybody for this alleged kidnapping. Now, uh, I believe this criticism uh, uh, to be false. Uh, uh, recently, there have been even uh, scholars connected with CCP, Chinese scholars, uh, uh, who read my article about the McDonald's incident and uh, found it very accurate. So even scholars in China, if they are scholars, now admit that the uh, McDonald's crime was perpetrated with a diff by a different group. It was a group using the name of Almighty God, uh, 
but they didn't recognize uh, uh, as Almighty God the same person your church uh, worships as Almighty God. For men, Almighty God were two girls, members of the group, so one God in two persons. But it's a different religion, so that should be more or less clear, but unfortunately, uh, even in China, one thing are the, the professors and the scholars, and one thing is the CCP propaganda, which sometimes uh, still mentions the McDonald's case, even if uh, I believe everybody now understands it was a different uh, group. Uh, gouging out the eyes of the boy in Shanxi, uh, even uh, in this case, uh, uh, the police did an investigation and decided uh, the, the responsible was the aunt of the boy and uh, she had family uh, grudges and she was also mentally disturbed in the end committed suicide but she was not a member of the Church of Almighty God and nothing to do with the Church of Almighty God and uh, this file was closed by the police uh, and only after the McDonald's some Chinese anti-cultists tried to blame also on this crime the, the Church of Almighty God. Uh, perhaps for one interesting reason, that if we look at the anti-Christian propaganda in China, even before the CCP, one frequent accusation against Christians in China is they gouge out the eyes of the Chinese. So it's very old uh, uh, accusation against all Christians in China, so it's not surprising they use it against the, the, the Church of Almighty God, which is very interesting uh, because a small detail is that uh, uh, I, I don't know any case of uh, Church of Almighty God, but uh, there are cases of Falun Gong, and they claim that in Chinese jails, the eyes of their followers are gouged out by CCP. So it's, uh, uh, it's, it's strange that they accuse others of gouging out the eyes of people while they are accused exactly of the same crime. Uh, the case of riots is also very interesting uh, because uh, uh, the riots, according to CCP, happened because Church of Almighty God uh, believed the world will end in 2012 based on so-called Mayan prophecies. Now, there is a, a, a small problem about it, that the Church of Almighty God does not believe in the end of the world. Uh, the Church of Almighty God uh, believes this world will be transformed after some catastrophes, but doesn't believe in the concept of the end of the world. Even if we look at a book which is far from being favorable to Church of Almighty God, uh, the book by Australian scholar Emily Dunn, she believes that uh, Number one, we should understand that in 2012, many Chinese took an interest in the Mayan prophecies and the movie 2012, uh, like many Americans. It was a, a global fashion and a global uh, uh, phenomenon. And uh, Emily Dunn believes that some, uh, and I believe she's right, uh, that some members of the Church of Almighty God, of course, Church of Almighty God is a very big reality in uh, China, some members also shared this interest for the so-called Mayan prophecies, but uh, she says very clearly, and again her book is by no means a book favorable to the Church of Almighty God, that uh, those who believed in the end of the world in 2012 uh, uh, were uh, disciplined and criticized by the leaders of the Church of Almighty God. Uh, the leaders told them, don't believe in this, that's not part uh, of the Almighty God's words, uh, and some of them were even expelled. So uh, it's perhaps true that some individual brothers and sisters just were caught in this uh, popular interest in 2012 as the date of the end of the world, but that's very clearly some very far away from uh, the theology of the Church of Almighty God. So it's impossible that the Church of Almighty God announced the, the destruction of the world in 2012 uh, 
if not for other reasons, for the very valid reasons that you don't believe that this earth will be destroyed. It will be transformed, but not destroyed. So how can you predict that it will be destroyed in 2012? And on the kidnappings, as I said, the CCP never took a great interest. That was propaganda by some Christian churches, not uh, the CCP. And uh, I, I wrote a small article about the case. Uh, I believe uh, the key of this story is precisely that the CCP didn't arrest anybody and didn't prosecute uh, anybody for the kidnappings of 2002. Uh, if really the kidnappings had occurred as uh, ch some leaders of China Gospel Fellowship uh, say, and uh, they also say that they did talk with the police about the kidnapping. It would have been uh, a very beautiful opportunity for CCP to increase the crackdown and to justify the crackdown. Now, the, the CCP didn't arrest anybody, didn't investigate anybody, didn't prosecute anybody, which is very strange. And I believe casts a doubt on uh, the fact that some, something that can be legally defined as kidnapping really occurred in 2002. Yes. Oh, I forgot one important point, if I may, that uh, there is also another very clear evidence that's important for international organizations, uh, that the CCP did not start the persecution of the Church of Almighty God uh, because of the crimes because their persecution started immediately in the 1990s. Now forget the kidnapping they didn't mention until last year, but the first crime uh, they really insist on is the riot for 2012, and they occurred much later. Well, they mentioned some confrontation with other Christians uh, uh, around the year 2000, but uh, they started the persecution well before any alleged crimes. So here we have evidence that the CCP did not start the persecution because of the crimes, uh, because the chronology doesn't cooperate. They first started the persecution and then they started talking about the crimes, but the, the, they started talking about the crime later, uh, meaning that the persecution at any rate was not motivated by the crimes and the persecution was really uh, motivated by uh, intolerance and discrimination against religion, which is very important when it comes to the position of China in the international organizations.